And now I would like to call out Professor Abdullah Antepli to introduce our student speaker. Thank you very much, Professor Edme. Congratulations, class of 2022. It is with abundance of joy, delight, distinct honor and pleasure, I present and introduce our student speaker, my within an hour former, friend, former student and a lifelong friend, Kyle Malati. Yes, let's give it to Kyle. If you do not know Kyle, which is close to impossible if you are in the Stanford universe, uh, after his remarks, you will see why I and everybody who knows him hold, hold in the highest regards possible. Carl Malati hails from the pious and virtuous city of Las Vegas. <laughs> and as a Brazilian American, first generation American, first generation college student, he has made this place, Duke and Sanford, in many ways better, richer, and more nurturous. He, he served in many long uh, places at Duke. He was the co-chair of the Duke American Grand Strategy, and he was the president of Duke Education Reform. He additionally serves as a Team Keenan Fellow at the Keenan Institute of Ethics, and as a PEP Fellow at Heart Leadership Program, and more. He interned for the U.S. Congress, for the United States Government of Accountability Office, and after graduation, he will be in Washington, D.C., continuing to make us proud and more proud. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Malati. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. <laughs> Class of 2022. <laughs> Friends, family, faculty, and guests, let's all join in celebrating this very special occasion. And for mom and dad, surprise, I didn't tell them I was going to be doing this, so it's truly an honor to share this moment with all of you. <laughs> Now is the time to celebrate these past few years we have spent becoming the next generation of leaders in our community and studying at the forefront of public policy academia. And what a journey it has been. We are the last class left at Duke to have experienced a fully normal freshman year before the pandemic. I remember when we were told to stay home during spring break of our sophomore year. Duke told us, do not come back, stay where you are, and then we had all of our belongings shipped to us in a big box. I remember being in a state of total shock because I wasn't sure which was worse, the fact we weren't gonna be able to come back to Duke and continue our amazing education, or the fact that my entire net worth fit inside of a four foot long cardboard box. <laughs> but the class of 2022 was resilient. We came back to campus the next year more prepared than ever to tackle the greatest problems in society using the tools we learned in class. Some of us volunteered in the 2020 presidential election. Groups like Duke Votes, Durham Drives, Paulus, and many others helped hundreds of people get registered to vote and get to the polls. And at the heart of many of these groups is the school we all came to know and love, the Sanford School of Public Policy. But what exactly is the thing that we study? I realize not many of our guests today may know what public policy is, so let's take a moment to reflect on what it means. This is particularly good timing because this is the 50th year of public policy at Duke, and public policy has transformed so much. While in true academic fashion, I can start to define what public policy is by telling you what it is not. Public policy is not the study of economics or history or political science or philosophy or even statistics. It's the intersection of all those disciplines and many more. For some of us, it's been studying how to help fight climate change and challenge the impacts of global warming. For others, it's been studying journalism to learn how to hold our leaders accountable. For others, it's been studying foreign policy to promote world peace. And that's only the beginning. We do this to address the problems of society where we see them, to fight injustice every time it happens, and to fix institutions that have been broken for far too long. We all have different reasons for majoring in public policy. Perhaps you felt the internal calling to public service to better our society and make the world a better place. Or maybe you took Econ 101 before it was pass fail and you got a bad grade, so you switched majors the same day. There's many reasons why we are here today, but now I will share a little bit about why I am here. I am proudly a first-generation American, a low-income student. 
I was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Both my parents immigrated to the United States from Brazil. My mother was a lawyer in Brazil before coming here. She wanted to become a public servant and defend society's most vulnerable. But when she got here, the United States wouldn't recognize her law degree because the legal system here is different. And so I decided early on that I wanted to follow in my mother's footsteps, and that served as my motivation to get to Duke. But as soon as I got this dream to go to a really good school, I was confronted with the reality of just how hard it would be to achieve that goal. Growing up in Nevada, I can declare that the education system there is broken. The state is ranked 49th in K-12 education, even though it isn't remotely close to last in GDP, size, or population. But like many of you, I chose to run towards the problem rather than away from it. I had a motivation towards public service because even if I couldn't benefit from a broken system, I could do my best to try to fix it. And so I came to Sanford because I wanted to fix Nevada schools. I became a research assistant for an education policy professor. I founded a club called Duke Students for Education Reform. I even wrote my honors thesis on constitutional law and education. I told myself I was going to run for governor back home and solve the problem. Majoring in public policy has made me feel like I'm on the path to becoming the civil servant I've always wanted to be. Outside of class, I joined political clubs and even did internships in government to solidify my plan. The next step in my journey to follow my mother's footsteps and become an elected official was law school. But suddenly, it was the fall of senior year, and I discovered, it turns out, you can't go to law school with zero dollars in the bank. So, like many of you, I'll be doing consulting after graduation. <laughs> but we're still on track. Even though I won't get the chance to be a public servant right away, I still have the same dream for my home state in the future. <laughs> Thank you. But what that journey taught me is that a degree in public policy may lead you down many different paths. But what matters is not the path you take, but where you end up. It doesn't matter if your path is not an obvious policy path, say because you're not filling the ranks of the civic service or leading in public office. What matters in the end is that you always direct your knowledge and your power towards the public good. Even though you might not be a school board member or a city councilor or a congressperson or a senator today, you do have the vocation and the mindset to be a change maker, a critical thinker, and a strong leader. And not too far from now, many of us will be in those high positions. I believe public policy is so much more than just understanding how the government works. I believe it's a disposition. We've learned to think critically about politics, to give all sides of an argument equal consideration, to support our conclusions with fact-based evidence, and most importantly, we learn to think through issues with a lens of ethics and respect for humankind. So much of our time at Sanford has focused on storytelling, on crafting our own while understanding those around us through our narratives. What will your story be? I believe what we have done these past four years should not just be a blip in our autobiographies. I know when I go home to Nevada, I'll change the story for the next generation of kids like me. I'll do the heavy lifting to end the ubiquitous cycle of broken institutions, and I'll leave a positive mark on my community. I ask that each of you do the same, because I know there is nothing we're incapable of doing. I believe when we leave this stadium, we don't leave what we learned at Sanford. Many times over the course of this weekend, you will hear how we are forever Duke, living out the mission of the university to share the knowledge we attained these past four years and make a positive contribution to society. But if we are going to live up to the mission we dedicated ourselves to at Sanford, to be champions of change, we must see it through in every aspect of our lives. And so today, in this 50th year of public policy at Duke, in this stadium of champions, I declare to you, we are not just forever Duke, we are also forever Sanford. Thank you.